I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast. Today we want to talk about discipline and punishment, but we want to do so from a DS or a DDLG type of dynamic. What we're talking about here is a limited power exchange. In the past, we've talked about slave punishments and more of a total power exchange or a master-slave dynamic, but today we want to talk about someone who's in a more limited uh, power exchange. And by limited, we mean that it is not all-encompassing. The submissive still has limits, and the dominant is only dominant over a negotiated uh, amount of the submissive's life. Therefore, the submissive may not uh, be a submissive to the dominant all the time. It may not be 24-7, or if it is 24-7, uh, it is uh, just a regular dominant and submissive relationship, and it's not to the level of master-slave. Uh, discipline and punishment are somewhat different things. Uh, discipline is a letter in the BDSM acronym, and it is the umbrella for all of the punishments and correction, training, service, protocols, rituals, routines, etiquette. It, it, it is an umbrella for all of those things. And discipline generally focuses on teaching desirable future behavior, while punishment is inflicting some type of suffering as a consequence for past behavior. For, and it's for past behavior that is um, breaking a rule or uh, breaking a rule or doing a type of behavior that isn't, uh, isn't uh, tolerated within the dynamic. Um, first off, punishments should not be done in anger. And they should always done, be done to reinforce positive behaviors, things that build your relationship, things that connect you in your relationship, things that, uh, that are just positive in your relationship. Let's look at some ideas for punishing a submissive without being physical or giving them spankings. Because not everyone is into sadism and masochism. And so there needs to be uh, uh, some punishments that are applicable for all types of dynamics. Uh, first, discussion. Uh, this is for the minor infractions or perhaps a first-time offense. Simply stating that you're disappointed in their actions and offering a better solution for next time. Uh, this can, can include somewhat of a lecture. Uh, it can um, allow for feedback from the submissive so that you can, they can be transparent with you. They can tell you what they were thinking, uh, what their thought process was, why they felt like they broke the rule, or why they... Uh, why they have disappointed you. And so it allows for some feedback. Uh, and uh, it is oftentimes that disappointment uh, th that you uh, are disappointing a dominant partner that is the consequence. Uh, and the, and hearing that you're disappointed can really make a huge impact on a submissive and a submissive mindset. Um, second, getting a submissive's input, deciding on a punishment together by letting the submissive voice their thoughts on what punishment would fit the crime. Discuss why they acted out and what they did wrong and the desired behavior for next time. Daily affirmations is another type of punishment. Uh, use this for when the submissive talks bad about themselves or talks bad about their body. Uh, this will help them see the beauty and value of their life while reinforcing a positive body image. Give them a sentence to say in the mirror every morning, something like a mantra, or even every hour, and then take a pic and see the beauty within oneself. 
Um, reenactment is another type of uh, punishment. Redo the situation immediately, this time with the correct behavior. Repeat if needed. Answer any questions they may have to better understand what they did wrong and what will be expected of them next time. When I was a when I was a kid, I left popsicle sticks behind the couch. When I would eat a popsicle, instead of taking the stick to the trash, I would throw it behind the couch. Uh, in order to reenact the the uh, situation, I was required to take one popsicle stick at a time from the living room all the way to the trash can and throw it away, walking to and from both ways. That is an idea there for you of reenactment, redoing a situation with correct behavior in order to reinforce that correct behavior. Lectures, make them meaningful learning experiences, not just scoldings. Uh, explaining the desired behavior, why it's desired, and why it's best for the sub and the relationship. Uh, so there, you may choose to incorporate lecture without discussion, uh, especially if you have a submissive that is uh, cons kind of consistently speaking back or uh, needs to learn to hold their tongue, needs to learn silence. Um, something like no dessert. If you're in a mommy or daddy relationship with an adult little, um, no dessert can definitely be a huge consequence. This can be a restriction from their favorite foods. It doesn't just have to be something sweet. Uh, their favorite snacks, their favorite dessert. You can also force them to eat something that they don't like. Always make sure that it's within their boundaries and always make sure that they don't have any allergies or negative reactions to that food. Uh, some people can't handle spicy food, so if you if they were talking back to you and you make them put uh, hot sauce on their tongue, they may have a negative reaction. Writing lines. This is a big one and a common one within BDSM, especially in certain dynamics. It's making sure that the sentences include either what they did wrong or the changed behavior. They should be numbered, neat, and with correct spelling and grammar. You can have them put their finished pages in a folder so they can keep up with all of their infractions. Oftentimes, something like journaling uh, goes well with writing lines. Um, it often is really good for someone who doesn't like to write. Somebody who isn't a writer. Uh, someone who is... Uh, just that is not their thing. It can be a great punishment because they're doing something that they do not enjoy in order to correct the right behavior, reinforce the right behavior. This uh, writing, this can be a letter to the dom or an essay paper like in school. There should be an apology, also an explanation of what they did wrong and how this will be corrected in the future. Again, this should be in proper paragraph format with correct spelling and correct grammar. Um, oftentimes, this is a good way for them to you to give them an assignment to research something and bring you an essay on what they discovered, like ways to uh, do the behavior correctly, uh, ways to learn how to correct the wrong action. Um, often a withdrawal from privileges. Uh, punishment often isn't, and discipline often isn't uh, uh, giving someone a spanking. Sometimes it's also withdrawing something that, they, uh, that, they f that is a privilege, and really everything can be considered a privilege, like using a chair using sheets on a bed, using having a door on your bedroom. All of these things can be privileges that you don't, even things that you, everyday things that you don't feel are privileges. Um, basically grounding them from your favorite toys 
or activities for a designated length of time. So within BDSM, if they have a certain toy or tool that they really like, uh, you can oftentimes make them take it out, clean it, lay it out like you're going to do for a scene, go through an entire scene without using it, and then make them clean it again and put it up. Um, extra cleaning or extra chores. This would be extra chores that they normally don't do or they don't do as often. You can also make it more intense by having them uh, clean using only a toothbrush or use or on their knees. I've often said that um, uh, an effective one would be to uh, trim the lawn or pull weeds using scissors. <laughs> it's using a, an unconventional tool to perform the task. So here are a few more that are a little more extreme. And we want to preface this by saying, make sure you know you're submissive enough to know the punishment, punishment won't cause a negative outcome. We don't want to cause trauma and we don't want to, our punishments to be viewed as abusive. The point of a punishment is to correct a behavior and to reinforce the negotiated behavior. So really, oftentimes, this is a big point to make, is that uh, in a limited power exchange, you can't, uh, if you don't have a rule for something, you oftentimes can't punish for things that you don't have a, a power exchange over or you don't have power or control over. So there's definitely, you want to make sure that you've negotiated the things that are within the scope of the power exchange. So um, one such as, a punishment such as corner time, having to sit still either in a corner or up against a wall. They can be placed in a cage or in some type of light bondage during this time. No talking, no moving, no using electronics. It can be intensified by having to hold a coin on the wall with their nose or kneeling on rice or, or holding books on outstretched arms. Another is bondage. Any form of bondage for a set amount of time. During this time, they're not allowed to talk. They're not allowed to resist or try to escape they're to reflect on their actions and what modifications need to be made in order to avoid another punishment. While they're tied up, you should never leave them alone, and you don't need to have them gagged as a safety precaution. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, another one would be no contact. And this doesn't mean that you ignore them. It, um, you explain what they did wrong. You explain the length of the punishment the length of the time with no contact, and the behavior you were expecting. They were to take the time to reflect on their behavior and how they can change it. And during this time, they're not allowed to initiate any form of contact in person, online, text, or calling, unless it is a legitimate emergency. Lose furniture privileges. Like we said in the past, everything, even things that you don't think about, um, are privileges. In this type of punishment, they're not allowed to sit on any furniture during a designated time. This includes, but not limited to, like a couch, a chair, a bed, a kitchen table, or outdoor furniture. They're to sit on the floor to do any activity, including eating, sleeping, or whatnot. Removing a collar or changing the color of a collar or the type of collar. Now, this is a, oftentimes a least favorite punishment to give or to receive. Um, we usually don't recommend removing a collar, but it should be used as a last result. A result um, and only to remove it or change it temporarily. At this point, if you've tried other types of punishments and the person is still disobeying, they're still being bratty or being disrespectful, you need to sit them down. You need to discuss, discuss if this is a relationship that they really want because there's no reason 
an adult can't follow negotiated rules. They might be acting out because they're unhappy the rela- with the relationship. Perhaps they're unhappy in their submissive identity or they're misunderstanding what a power exchange is or misunderstanding the lifestyle altogether. So by removing a collar uh, or changing the color of a collar or the type of collar, uh, it would be giving them a uh, kind of and last option resort of of showing them what it would be like if the relationship was to to end because you're at your last straw they're at they're you know they're at a critical time now overall with <clears throat> excuse me with all punishments once a punishment's completed it should be dropped it is like an atonement for one's sins, to use a religious terminology there. You shouldn't bring up previous punishments or bad behavior when you're dealing with current behavior unless they keep disobeying the same rules, unless it is um, it is a consistent, like a habit has been formed. Be sure they know that you're proud of them for completing the punishment and use it as a tool to be a better submissive and the person for you in your relationship in the future. Remember that power exchanges are relationship dynamics. They are relationships. And so we want to make sure that as a dominant, we're holding up our end of the relationship, and as submissives, they are holding up their end of a relationship. Uh, it, a power exchange only works when there is an exchange of power, when one person is leading and the other person is surrendering or yielding. That is a power exchange. It may be limited. It may not cover every aspect or be all-encompassing in your life. That may never be even a goal for you. You may, you know, for a lot of people, they don't even aspire to a master slave relationship. It's not even on their radar. It's not even a goal. And so, which is perfectly acceptable, perfectly valid. I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for this BDSM United podcast, talking about punishments and discipline within a limited power exchange relationship, such as a DS or a DDLG or an MDLB. You can find all of our resources at www.bdsmunited.com. And it's been a joy talking to you about this topic, and I'll talk to you again soon.